Hi everyone, Dr. Vicki here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in William, Massachusetts. It is time for tarot scopes again. We'll be doing tarot scopes for the sign of Libra, that's Libra Sun, Libra Moon, or Libra Rising for the month of August, 2023. Um, I'm gonna look at a little astrology to start, and then we'll do an Oracle card poll, and then we will do a tarot reading using the top deck, which is the deck I chose for all the air signs um <clears throat> this month so i have my notes <laughs> so um libra is a venus rule sign and on july 22nd uh, venus went retrograde and she will be retrograde all of august and come out of retrograde motion uh september 3rd and then from that point on, she moves through Leo for like the last sweep from 13 to 30 degrees and uh, moves, out of Le Le moves out of Leo October. I think the first week, I can't remember the exact day. Um, and so being it is your ruling planet, and it's not in your sign, it's not retrograde in Libra, but it is retrograde in a sign that you have a sympathetic relationship with, which is which is cancer. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Leo, sorry about that. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, I don't wanna say I have that on my brain, but anyway. Um, so there's this reevaluation uh, for you. And it's really a reevaluation of your friends and who your friends are, a reevaluation of your social connections. Um, and you may go, wow, these people are amazing. I didn't realize, like, these people in my life and I'm gonna do more to keep them there. Or you could say, what am I doing here? And who are these people? What was I thinking or not thinking? Or so it could work either way. It depends just this realization. We, we have a lot of realizations this, uh, this month and um, we start the month with a full moon, which is pretty powerful in itself. It's a full moon in Aquarius, another sympathetic sign to you. We're, we're talking about the air signs here. And for you, it's in your house of um, hold on. It's in your house of friends. We have the sun in your 11th, the friends, goals, new goals, perhaps. Um, imp more impersonal relationships. It's like you don't take things personally from them. Um, and then the fifth house, which is um, where, where the moon is, where the feelings are, there's this sense maybe of not being loved. But he loves me. Nobody understands me. Um, but the full moon is there to make us aware of something. Maybe that isn't your story, but it is there to make us aware. And we're being aware along the axis of love, the love that we give and the love that we receive. Is it equal? Is it in balance? Is it in balance? Libra is about balance. It's not about being a doormat. It's about being responsible and reasonable and um, like an anti-Libra would be what um, MTG did uh, at the in the house when she showed the, the uh, nudies of Hunter. Like that's like anti-Libra. Libra wouldn't consider it, right? You see, I have my Libra, um, let me take these off. I have my Libra um, little altar here. 
I have uh, Moss Agate, which I put on my altar for all the signs. My Libra picture. This is a beautiful card that one of my uh, students made for me and sent for me for my birthday. And, and sent a little gift so I could get a pedicure. <laughs> oh, I did actually have my husband do, do my nails. Because he's an artist, I figured. You know, everything he does, he's pretty much good at. So he'll be good at this. Well, it looked great. And it was at night when he did it. So to me, I couldn't see, he couldn't see. The next morning, he like painted my toe. Like... He painted the nail, but he painted the toe, he painted everything. I was like, oh my God, look at my toes. So he still owes me a pedicure. <laughs> or he owes me to send me for a pedicure. Okay, so, so we have this beautiful bird. So so Venus, it's, it's Venus rule sign. It loves beauty. It loves love. It loves to be social. It loves to keep things joyful. There's a joy to Libra. There's a joy to Libra. And right now, Pluto is squaring you, right? You And the south node, right? The south node is, is now in Libra. And so Libra is going to see a lot of stuff coming past them, coming their way. They don't have to, they don't have to participate, but they have to be aware of it and know and learn the lesson from it, right? Learn the lesson. And also that self node brings forth knowledge from the past, not just about what you're trying to escape. It's like, we have to use the knowledge of what it's like to be balanced again, what it's like to balance the male and, and, and female, bring balance between uh, our intuition and our logical mind. Uh, it's time to reconnect with, the feminine side of us. And um, and so we have a lot of wisdom with that. And I think we're also going to see, and I know this is sort of off subject, but I do see that we're going to have, um, if, if not the actual laws passed to benefit women, um, the whatever it takes to get the, the underpinnings of that so that you know, within the time that the South Node is in Libra. But it's very possible because things happen very quickly. And, you know, a lot of things have been accelerated and, you know, it's like all the bad stuff gets accelerated, but so does all the good stuff. I mean, the ability to manifest right now is like amazing. And so you just have to have a focus, a focused intention uh, to do that. Um, but anyway, that's that's for all of us, not just Libra. So take that little gem, Libra, that you got that and meant for everybody. Um, we also have a trine between Mars and Jupiter on that same day. Anything Jupiter touches gets bigger. And then we have Mars there. And Mars is um, force, but it's in Virgo which I kind of like, uh, I kind of like the fact that it's in Virgo because Virgo will in a way s slow it down um, because it's earth, but it's not so fixed. It's like the ability to like make the adjustments that are necessary to get us in the right direction are right there, they're right here for us to utilize. And for you, it connects your house, your home, your fourth house with your 12th house, which is the other side. And so there's this energy of healing, profound healing, generational healing that can happen, transcending lifetimes, healing of perhaps something to do with indigenous, indigenous people getting their rights back. That's a healing. The more indigenous people who get their rights, the more right we give to the earth herself. The people of the wisdom of the planet, they, they will help us. They have to, they help us, they help themselves, right? 
and that's where it's that's accessible to all of us. I mean, you can read about it, you can, but if you can uh, uh, tune to that vibration, you can pull it in psychically. It's like opening a book and seeing um, how it was done. In a way, it's kind of like Google, but you know, no ads. <laughs> And we also have Mercury uh, make an opposition to Saturn. And Mercury is in Virgo and Saturn is in Pisces. So there's a line that's being drawn with this energy. So we have this full moon, this realization. Then we have this energy of possibility of some deep healing aligned with a line in the sand. This is as far as you can go. This is the limit of the logical reason mind. Now we need to go somewhere else. And it's in Pisces and Neptune. And Pisces and Pisces and Pisces and Virgo. The axis of healing. That that with all the oppositions with Virgo, anything, Sun and Virgo. Um, Moon in Virgo, um, Mercury in Virgo, Mars in Virgo, it's going to be opposite um, where the sun is, and it's going to activate, um, it's going to activate that axis of love, it's going to activate the axis of healing. We also have a square between uh, Jupiter and Venus. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Actually, we do, but it's later in the week. Uh, Jupiter and the sun could be a little bit over our skis with that energy. So be careful that you don't push yourself too hard or put yourself in a situation. Um, don't let people talk you into stuff who don't have your best intentions. That's what I would say about that. And we also have Mercury make a trine to Jupiter on the same day. And so we have this connection between our spirit, the sun, uh, Jupiter, which is our, gener our generosity, our expansion, the expansion of, of our understanding. Um, in the fourth and twelfth house, there's an understanding here. There's an ancestral healing happening for you, Libra, of some sort. Um. Okay. Let me see, there's more, there's more, there's more. I'm sorry, I'm a little trying. Um, we also have, um, okay, so this is week two. All right, I have to get to week three. Yes, week three, that's, that's a pretty active week. And we have the conjunction of the sun and Venus. We get to the heart of the matter. Uh, for you, this is happening in your third house, the house of mind. It's also the house of siblings and your experience as a as a young kid, like just curious, like going around the neighborhood, figuring things out, you know. Um, And this is an opportunity to really look within and see what it is that's that's important to you. And what what was it that influenced you for those things to be important? And is that something you want to keep? Um, or or understanding where it came from. Sometimes you you don't need it anymore in a, in a certain way, right? So you can let things go through that process. 
we also have the sun square Uranus on that day. The sun, of course, in Leo, Uranus in Taurus. This is your third and 12th house again, getting activated. The third house um, is, a, is really a familial house because it deals with your siblings. And the 12th house is, I, I often see it as, um, well, it's connected to the other side. Uh, so there's a certain like gateway to other realms through that 12th house. Um, sorry, collective. It could be a, all right, I said third and 12th, I am wrong. It's the 11th and 8th, Libra. Don't lend your friends money. Not right now, anyway. It's not a good time. Doesn't mean you can't ever, but this is not a good time for that. Unless you can afford to lose it. Better to lose money than to lose a friend. So, you know, do what you want. You just, you know, it's like anything. You just have to be willing and able. Sometimes you're willing, but you're not able to pay the price, right? So it's just something you got to figure out for yourself. And then we have the new moon in Leo. And it is square Uranus, the new moon. So it is powerful and potent and can propel. There's a propulsion to that new moon on the 16th of August. 16 is the tower form, although August 16th is the Queen of, of uh, Wands, 24 steps, I think. Week four, um, we have, we have, I think, success in week three or something, you know, so it's like, whoa, this is, whoa, look at this, whoa, right? And then the next week we have to like figure out where we fit into all of this. I remember when um, my husband and I were watching the planes hit the towers. And I looked at him and I said, Michael, we, we have to figure out why we're here and we got to get our, our ass in gear because there, we have to be available for the healing that has to take place. That's what I said to him. And I was already, I already had a practice. I had a, a, a good practice in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Um, and uh, so I had that, I mean, I had a practice, but it was something even beyond that. It was something beyond just the patients that I would see in a week. Um, it was bigger than that. And I, and I knew that, and I knew that it was a time of destiny um, and that we had to get to work. And the work was difficult. I have to say the work was hard. And of course it was never, it's not never the work you think you're gonna have to do, it's different work, but you, you do it, it's all hard. You do it, you get through it, you're smarter for it. and those things do accumulate. So um, it's that feeling that you have to be part of something bigger and that something bigger has to be a healing. It has to be a healing. It has to be uh, like stop hurting each other and just like allow yourself to be loved and loved. And, you know, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. We don't have to annihilate ourselves. Not necessary, not necessary. We have to have compassion for each other. I have these two little doggies here. They got them at Christmas. They were like one of those Walmart Christmas things. And they're so cute. And they have like a magnet, so they always kiss. <laughs> The girl has the green scarf and the boy has the hat. I thought it was apropos for Libra, so I put that there. Okay, back to the astrology. <laughs> I feel like I should be having tea with you or a glass of wine or something. Like, well, I do have this, which is just water. 
Mm. It was a nice day today. It wasn't quite as hot as it's been, but it's still hot and um, it's still kind of muggy, but it's a nice summer night. Maybe we'll go to see, maybe we'll go to the water tonight, go walk along the beach. That'd be fun. We have them, so we might as well use them. All right. Um, so we have a yod to the sun. And for Libra, it's the sun is sitting in the seventh house. So we're being asked to make adjustments in the way we relate to others. Uh, maybe you spend so much time relating to the other and making them happy that or what you think is making them happy, whatever it is that you feel like you're doing for them. And um, some of that energy needs to go to the world at large and and you can still help and love and, you know, be, do what you need to do for another person. But um, you also have to like, um, see how you might be able to do it just a little better uh, without, you know, killing yourself, quite frankly. Um, do you have an opposition between Mars and Neptune? This is again, Mars is in uh, Virgo, Neptune, and of course is in Pisces. So we have that 11, let's see, what axis are we looking at here? Uh, 12th, 6th, the healing axis. So there's a healing taking place. It's a very healing time for all the, all the water signs. Because we have uh, like three trines, earth trines, uh, or like activates the earth trine with uh, Pluto and Mars and the sun and all well, like in Virgo. And, and so there's all this energy to um, bring this like earth energy into the emotional parts of the, of the air sign. So it's, it's, it's attending to the, um, the emotional pain that's expressed as physical pain to heal that and release that and come to understand it you know um trying to relate to other people is very difficult and because we have free will there you key there's no like no control to it you can try to control it but there is it's like a it's like every time you relate to somebody in a way, it's a new opportunity for either build a bridge or get yourself crushed. So in a weird way, kind of black and white with that, but but there's this there's this trust that has to happen. Um, and that's Libra. Libra understands that trust has to happen because it's love. And in order to be love, you have to be vulnerable. In order to be vulnerable, you have to be brave. So, um, you know, it's um, it's been hard on Libra. I know it has. The last couple of readings, I know, I, if I remember correctly, I just remember thinking, oh, that's so hard for Libra. Like, it's just hard. Like, these, just all these tests, you know? So, uh, and, I, and I empathize because I've had times in my life where it was just like test after test after test. And you're like, oh, what is the test? <laughs> Well, I'm past the damn task. We're just getting over. And you eventually get to the other side of it, but it can last a really long time and hit you on many different levels. But we live and we learn and we love. And that's what Libra is showing the way to trust the other, someone outside yourself, a stranger, really. It's a compassionate sign. It's a high-minded sign. Um, so we have the healing with Mars opposite Neptune. We have a square between Venus and Jupiter. 11th, 8th, this is don't, don't lend your friends money unless you can afford to lose it energy. <laughs> and then we have Mars make a trine to Pluto. This is a 12th, 10th house. Um, is it 12th, 10th? No, big, big, big. Mars. 12. I 
question is, Yeah, okay, goes on. Okay, one, two, three, four, twelve, and eight, twelve and eight. Yeah, this is a, an interesting trine because um, the twelfth and the eighth house are houses of of, of a letting go. In the eighth house, it's the letting go of ego. In the twelfth house, it's letting go of identity, really. You go from the I am to the we are all one. And then we come back into the I am. Now, this is off, off topic, which I always do. So apologies for off topic, but I think you'll like it. In 2020, I think it's six, could be five, but I think it's six, 2026, Saturn and Neptune are gonna make a conjunction. This takes a long, this is a long cycle, the Saturn-Neptune uh, cycle. I'm trying to think if it's 45 years or if it's 36 years, I think it's 36 years. Yeah, Saturn usually is tight with the years. I think it's 36 years. And uh, it's going to happen at the first degree of Aries, the I am. And the North Node at that time is going to be in Aries. So we're coming to this point of realization to understand who we are. And, um, you know, when you're in relationships and when you're into relationships, you know a lot about the other person, you know, through observation. And so you have a lot of wisdom to share. People are going to need the wisdom that you have when it comes to relating because you've taken a chance to relate. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, the sun will move into Virgo, which is your 12th house. So the sun is going to move through the most mystical, magical, and foggy part of your chart. A lot of impressions, a lot of memories, just like the gas phantasmagorical, you know? And then Mercury is going to also, Mercury is also in Virgo, it is in that house, turns retrograde in a sign that it rules in the house that it is the opposite of its rulership. So there's a real immersion into feelings. And so it would be easy to feel overwhelmed by your feelings at this time. So be aware of that and you can't stop them. See, the thing with feelings is that you gotta feel them. You gotta feel the feels. You gotta feel the good, the happy, the elated. You have to feel the sad and the and the sad and the broken hearted. You have to feel it all. And then you don't have to feel it again because you felt it. It's a desire, it's fulfilling a desire. It's like you eat until you're full. You you have a desire and that is satiated and you, you know, so that there's that energy here that we're talking about. It has to do with the moon and the nodes of the moon and the idea of Pluto squaring the, the nodes of the moon, especially to Libra, right? So it's, uh, it's also like, you know, like it has, I mean, Pluto has been going through uh, Capricorn since 2008 and squaring Libra this whole time. And now this is like the last, bada boom, like, last hurrah. Um, with the nodes squaring and the resolution of being the south node in, in the house in the sign of justice so justice is here i guess <laughs> all right
Uh, Mars, Pluto, 12th and 10th, no, 12th and 8th. Again, there's a letting go and the healing. There's a big letting go with that energy. Yeah. And then we have Mars move into Libra, your sign, and you can assert yourself. And you can assert yourself in the nicest possible way. And you will be fair and you will be uh, strong and you will understand. And you'll say, look, this is how this works. And let's, uh, let's get to it. Powerful. And then we have uh, to end the month, <laughs> we have another full moon. How about that? Full moon, new moon, full moon. That's quite a wallop in the in the emotion department, don't you think? Um, and the full moon is in your 12th. Um, the sun is in your 12th. The full moon is in your sixth. And this is the axis of healing, the transition, the letting go, the changing, the morphing. Like right before the butterfly comes out of the Christmas. So um, I was actually looking for a butterfly because I, I actually associate all the, well, I associate Gemini and Libra with butterflies, <laughs> not Aquarius necessarily. <laughs> Aquarius is more like an eagle coming down with his talons, but, uh, <laughs> or a Thunderbird maybe, right? Because it rules electricity. So, so lightning bolts and the, and the like sorry oh sorry about that okay so that's the astrology i know this is going really long and i apologize let's pull a um i'm really tired that's part of the problem i've been um doing some renovations in the house i don't know why i can't come into focus guys i'm really sorry I used to know how to do this. I have no idea why this isn't working. <sighs> Hold on one second. That's what I have to do. So I'm uh, picking an Oracle card from the animal Oracle deck. And um, I also have my earrings that I always like to wear for Libra because they're um, peacock feathers or that stylized, of course. And um, <clears throat> peacock associated with the go goddess Matt and Matt is uh, goddess justice. She holds the scales of justice. She, she balances um, the heart and the feather, right? The heart and the feather. I think this South Node and Libra thing is going to be really good, actually. I think it's just what the doctor ordered, honestly. Um, because we have to remember how to be nice to each other again. And Libra will teach us that before we can move forward and really make a difference. Um, come to, We have to come together. We have to come together. But we can come together in our own identity and our own sense of self. We don't have to be like, just one person or everybody. You get to be yourself and contribute. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Okay, what do we have? Antelope spirit, life is speeding up. Well, isn't that interesting? Now, let me find the book. Oops, what did I do with the book? Is it in here? Oh, dear me. Oh, here it is. Slip down. Antelope. Antelope. Should be right in the beginning. Might be the first one or the second one. Okay. Life is speeding up. When antelope spirit rushes into your life, you are being reminded of the quickening of your personal evolution as a powerful co creator. You are being told unequivocally that it is time to get moving. Set your intentions and take action towards making your dreams real. There is an in intensity you can feel, and it is important to take advantage of this energy right now. 
If you have a plan for your career or financial abundance, now is the time to step it up. If you're asking about a relationship, make that first move. Just know that the intentions you have set in motion are coming together now at warp speed. Stay alert and keep up. Things are getting interesting when antelope spirit calls you to move quickly. Ooh, move quickly. Make the rules. Okay, now we're going to look at the uh, Toth Tarot. And uh, I'm using the Toth for all the air signs this month. Okay. So let me just give these a really good shuffle. And see, it might take a while. I don't know, or it may not. I usually, am, I shuffle depending on whether I feel like I have to do it all my time or not. <laughs> Wait, just a couple more times. They're telling me, just a couple more times. You've kept these poor people long enough. Okay, enough. Enough of those shenanigans. We start with the Queen of Wands. This is the Queen of the Hearth. She holds the uh, stuff with the um, pine cone on top. It's symbolic of the pineal gland. She is psychic. She is. She has this, the, 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 the spirit of generosity within her. She's powerful. She's passionate. And let's see, so that's where you're at. You're a hot mama or papa, but there's this energy of keeping the, the, the flame alive in the heart. She's a Leo, this is a Leo energy. This is, and the new moon's in Leo. So that new moon is gonna be important for you. Crossing at the princess of wands. This is the messenger. How do you get the message out? How do you, uh, is it something you're not trusting? Is it, is it that you're not trusting that you have the capacities and the abilities I first said when I pulled up the queen of wands? See if it's at the root, ah, justice. Okay, so Lady Justice is speaking now. <laughs> She says, I've been watching. Don't think I haven't been watching. And the, 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 the scales will be balanced. The scales will be balanced. That's what I'm getting from these cards. We have the emperor in the past. Dominion. You know, the emperor isn't always positive. This could be a, a, a male energy that was controlling, but it's in the past. It's in the past. See in the sky. The three of cups, abundance. Look at that. So there are beautiful things coming your way. You have Mercury and Cancer on this card. So if, a, a, an abundance of love. People love you. They freaking love you. And the word for the month is love. Cups. Venus and Cancer, loving each other, nurturing each other. You need to spend your month nurturing yourself. And if you have a, a, um, a partner, you need to nurture each other. You need to do nice things for each other. And if you don't have a partner, partner up with somebody. You remember when you were in school and they'd say, okay, 
you hold your hand to the person next to you and then that was your partner like you didn't like you, you were like horrified when it was somebody that you really liked right then you'd be like scared like oh no I really like him now I'm his partner what's he gonna say to me is he gonna like me am I gonna sound stupid you know the silly things that you think when you're a kid <laughs> and you like the guy right and you you understand what I'm talking about <laughs> How it seemed from the outside, what kind of fool am I? You know, it's funny. I got this card in the same exact place for the Gemini reading. So if you happen to have Gemini and Libra, people really think you're uh, sending the clown. Don't bother, they're here. You know, it's about taking the leap of faith. I talked about that right in the beginning, how Libra is the sign that reaches out to the other as far as they can it's like the end of the line <laughs> this is you know that and that in a way is sort of the rule of law the law of giving and receiving the law of you know in its best way in its in its most pure way um a kindness and a willingness to be open to something outside of yourself, something other than what you know. Your domestic situation, you're feeling overwhelmed and oppressed. The emperor is in the past. Don't allow the past to dictate what the future, what, what the moment is. It can also mean you have a lot on your plate. And it's be it's 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 dampening your spirit. So you have to do something about that. Hopes and fears, the four of cups. This is called luxury in this deck. It's very different than most of the other four of cups, which is sort of like a discontent, the mind's discontent. This one is um this speaks of the moon and cancer. Just like a lot of feeling, a lot of feelings. There's a lot of feelings coming out. And of course, you have all that eighth house and twelfth house stuff happening. It's feelings. It's like the floodgates have opened, guys. And then we have the Prince of Wands, which is in this deck as the king. So we had you at home, right? The hearth fires. And then we have you at the end, taking your show on the road, expanding, having dominion, having power and control and movement over the, your spiritual, you know, what calls you spiritually and a change in fortune at the end. So there's a change. There's a big change coming. Underneath it all, we have 10 of cups, the devil, and the Knight of Discs. There's a little bit of a of a hint of debauchery here. I think there just needs to be uh, some discernment through this process. But with Mars in, in Virgo for all these tries and stuff, discernment is there. What's underneath this? There's definitely, a, it's not a bad energy. There's definitely a sexual component to this energy. Uh, so there's something underneath it all. Um, there can be, um, I, I, I'll just say what I'm, I'll just say what I'm thinking or what's coming through. There can be um, a sexual um, addiction of to somebody's energy here. Um, but in and ultimately it's it's not 
serving you. And so it's it's that's the oppression. It's like your traps because of this, this that you feel the need to like have this almost like addiction to uh, a certain way of feeling or uh, maybe a comfort around resources. Um, but you don't have to be oppressed. You can be free. It's a choice, right? All right. So that's what I see, guys. Um, hopefully that made some sense to you. It was rather meandering, and I apologize for that. But I sort of went where spirit spoke to me to go. So that's what kind of reading that was. Um, <laughs> the heat, the end of the day. Uh, all right, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe. If you would like a reading with me, there's a link below. I do hour and hour and a half readings. Um, and uh, my website's a little confusing, so I apologize for that. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna streamline it a little bit, make it a little bit easier on you. So things come up in a better order than they are. They just sort of all they are and it's, does, it's just not the best. So that's that's on my list of things to do with all this Virgo energy happening. But um, um, it's it's really important um, to give yourself the credit through this period, it's really important that you um, give yourself the credit and give your and 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 know how courageous you are. Even though sometimes you don't feel courageous, uh, know that you are courageous and that you can get back. You can you can escape. If, if there's almost like an escape feeling here, but uh, it can just be an escape from your own mental point of view that you that it has to be this way and it doesn't it doesn't there's other opportunities there's other lives there's other things to do so yeah all right i well i don't know hopefully that helps um i also have a, i also have a patreon page i think i got distracted from that um the link is below just you can also just like and put the thumbs up and share that's good too i've just reached 10,000 subscribers it's a big deal for me you know hopefully uh we can i would go to 12,000 that'd be fun <laughs> that sounds like a nice number 12 is kind of a magical number a couple of zeros at the end that'd be cool so uh yeah so have yourself a great month everyone um take care of yourself libra okay you are precious Take care, everyone. Namaste.